Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for Lightroom, I'm going to show you how to create this film inspired look that I have on screen in front of me at the moment. Now if you've ever watched movies like The Lord of the Rings or you've watched things like Fight Club, you'll know they've got a definite colour palette that's been applied to them. Now we're going to look at recreating the same kind of effect. I've got a preset that's freely available and the link is in the description below so you can download that and use that to get a good starting point. But if you'd like to know exactly how to create this effect for yourself and what you need to do to adjust it and get the effect that you're looking for, then stick around and I'll show you all of that in this video. So here's our starting point. As you can see, it's quite different to the end result that we're aiming for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the develop module from top to bottom and show you all the different settings and why I adjust them to give the effect that we end up with. So to start off with, let's come over to the basics panel and expand that out. And we're going to go through this now and we're going to start off with the tone section. So first of all, I'm just going to bump the exposure ever so slightly, probably about a third to a half a stop, just to lighten the image ever so slightly. Next up, we're going to take the contrast and we're going to push that up by about plus 50 just to get some serious contrast in the image itself. Once we've done that, we're going to move on to the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. We're going to take the, the highlights and we're going to drop those down just to make sure we don't end up clipping any highlight areas where we bump the contrast. We'll take that down to about minus 60. And we'll do with the shadows, you can see we've got some dark areas with the shovel and the sort of the foliage in the background. So let's open that up ever so slightly. We'll take the shadows, we'll just boost those by about plus 30, plus 40, depending upon the image and the effect we're looking to achieve. So we start to get a little bit more detail back into the darker areas. What we're going to do now is we're going to come to the whites and we're going to take those and we're going to drop those down. We're going to take those down to about minus 40, minus 50 to make sure that we retain all of the details. So you can see in the hat, in the shovel, we're keeping all that detail in there. We're not losing anything. And with the blacks, we're gonna do the same kind of thing. We're just gonna drop those down ever so slightly. Not too far, because we don't wanna go crazy this one. I'll still keep some of that detail in the darker area. So about minus 20 for this image works nicely. So what we've effectively done is we've opened up and increased the dynamic range we have available to us in the image. So when we start taking the clarity and the vibrance and so on, we're going to have a lot more dynamic range to work with. So let's start off with a clarity. Let's just give that a sort of pseudo HDR effect. And this is great where you have great textures in the image. So like with the hat, the skin and all the different things like that, it really does give a good effect. So if we boost the clarity up, and we're not going to go crazy with this, but we want to get a nice effect in there. We want to really sort of push the contrast between the sort of shadows and the, the highlights. So that's looking pretty good to start off with. You can see that really shows the detail out in his skin, the wrinkles, and uh, all the textures available to us. We're going to take the vibrance because that works well with the greens, blues, and skin tones. So we're just going to give that a little bit of a boost, not go crazy with it. Take that up maybe about plus 20 around that kind of range. And then we're gonna take the saturation and we're gonna take that down. So we just end up retaining some of the skin color and the foliage color, but not too much. We wanna drop that right the way down. So we just suggest color in there. So about minus 40 is a good starting point. And the reason we do it that way, we don't take all the color out is because when we start adding in some of the split toning, just to give it those colors in the shadows and in the highlights, we want some of the original color to stay in there as well. So next up, we're going to move on to the split toning section. So we're going to come down to split toning and we're going to go through and we're going to set two values, one for the shadows, one for the highlights. Now, what I want is I want the highlights to have a slight orange sepia tint to them and I want the shadows to have a sort of blue turquoise tint to them. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the hue for the highlights. We're going to take that up to around about 36 to 38. That takes us into the orange sepia kind of colors and you can see we can now use the saturation to boost that. But before we do, let's just go to the saturate, or say the hue for the shadows. And like I say, I want to have a sort of blue tint to those. So we're going to take those up into the blue areas. About 226 gives us a nice kind of blue turquoise tone. Still brings a little bit of the greens back into it. So we have a nice color tone there. Then we're going to take the saturation up. We're going to give it more saturation in the highlights. We're going to take that up to around about 33, 34. That brings back some of the warmth into the image. You can see that brings back some of the warmth into his skin tones and we start to get a nice yellowish brown tone to the background. Now we're going to do the same for the 
the actual shadows. So let's just bring that up. And we're going to go lower with this. We're just going to take this to about 17. And you can see we now start to get that kind of turquoisey green color in the background. So let's just A, B that so we can see where we are. So that's before. That's afterwards. And you can see it's fairly subtle, but it is there. And it gives it, like I say, that kind of movie tone to it. Now, obviously, you can adjust this depending upon the picture to any kind of tone that you want. So the final thing I want to do now just to wrap this up is come down to the effects section and I'm just going to apply a slight vignette to this just to again draw the attention into the subject in this image. So I'm not going to go crazy because it's already quite dark around the edges. So let's just bring that in ever so slightly just to pull our focus into the main main character in this. And there we go. That's kind of the effect that I was looking for. So let's take a look at it before and after so we can see exactly where we started to where we are now. So. Let's just AB those and you can see there's the starting image and there's what we've ended up with. And you can see we have a nice looking film effect, lots of texture in there, a sort of pseudo HDR effect. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we've released on the Kindle store, 8 Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques, where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.